welcome to all Caribbean entrepreneurs. If you've been ready and waiting to take your business digital and get paid online while you sip something strong on the beach, this podcast is for you. We'll hear from the Caribbean's finest entrepreneurs on topics like e-commerce, business development, brand building, social media, their wins and failures. This is the only place in the region helping you navigate the digital age from the Caribbean's perspective. This is Digipreneur FM. And now, let's give it up for the Digiboss himself, Mr. Karan Rose. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody tuning in to another episode of the Digipreneur FM podcast. And as usual, it is your boy, Mr. Rose. DJ, you know what to do. You got to fade us all the way out. You got to fade us out so we can talk to the people. It is March 21st, 2024, and this is episode number 155. 155. As usual, it is always a pleasure to get on here and talk to you. And we have yet another insightful episode. I think this is this is one of those episodes where there's got to be an asterisk to it because it's a very important episode, right? Um, and today we're going to be diving into the importance of having a U.S. bank account, a WISE account, and also a Color App account. But the Color App is only for Trinidad and Tobago listeners right now. But it's going to be rolling out to Jamaica very soon. Um, there's going to be an announcement and an event for that. But the Bank of America, uh, not the Bank of America, a U.S. bank account, you know, the WISE account, extremely, extremely critical information. And then I'm going to kind of touch on, you know, the, the color app and why that's important for you to get and set up as well. So this is going to be an episode where... I have some notes that I'm going to refer to, and then the others I'm just going to be kind of shooting from the hip, but the information has to get out there. So this, you see the first thing about the the U.S. bank account, um, I think everybody in the Caribbean should probably do this, but this is extremely important for my Trinidad and Tobago listeners because we have some amazing challenges when it when it comes to foreign exchange Um, and this is going to be extremely helpful both the u.s bank account and also the wise account so folks we know that there are many limitations that we are facing in trinidad and tobago when it comes to forex that's no that's no secret at this point and that has made conducting business in trinidad a nightmare if you are someone who has to pay vendors you got to pay suppliers you got to buy raw materials or you're just somebody who travels then this is something you're going to want to know all about how to open up a US bank account how to set up a wise account and also you know color as well and in knowing this information it's going to help you minimize the reliance on getting US dollars from the local banks all right Now, why is USD such a problem in Trinidad? According to the government, there is a foreign exchange shortage in Trinidad and Tobago. And because of this, the banks have limited access to all Forex. They've limited the access to all Forex for the majority of the public, right? We already know that there's a select group of individuals, group of business owners where they have all the access they need to 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 run their operations but the the vast majority of us you know uh, we don't get access to the to the foreign exchange our largest bank in trinidad and tobago republic bank has recently cut their usd allocation on their credit cards from ten thousand usd as the maximum allowed that you could have to five thousand usd 
And what I encourage everybody to do is, because Republic Bank is the largest bank, um, one of the largest banks in the region, um, pay attention to that. Because your other banks could cut their U.S. allocation as well, right? So just pay attention. Republic Bank was the first domino. Pay attention to the rest of the banks. And these limitations have hurt the purchasing power of all businesses, from micro to small to medium-sized businesses. Even large businesses have challenges with, with foreign exchange. And this is going to hurt if you are somebody who has to buy your raw materials abroad. Or maybe you need to, you're subscribing to SaaS products and you have to pay for your products via credit card every single month. Some of these programs are not expensive. I mean, so, so sorry. Some of these programs are very expensive. And you need to be able to have U.S. allocation on your credit cards to be able to conduct your business. Our banks links Visa debit cards. This is for Trini listeners. They do not work outside of the country. So, you know, when you travel and you bring your Republic Bank, your FCB card, these these cards don't work outside of Trinidad. And in the case of Scotia Bank. Scotia Bank and an RBC, they give you 100 US per day um, allocation. If you're going to be using your your card at an ATM or at a point of sale abroad, and if you're using things like JMB, well, they give you 200 USD for the month allocation. So I have seen people, right? Now, I've written some articles and I've put that out to, you know, get it out to the public, and it's caused quite a stir online. And I'm reading some of the comments, and I just, I just have to laugh. I just have to laugh. Like some of y'all don't realize your your your, your privilege is showing. Your ignorance is is on is on Front Street. I've I've literally seen people comment under under my posts saying this article is stupid. Why don't you just go and get a higher U.S. limit on your credit card, folks? Not everybody can get a higher limit. That's not a solution when the vast majority of people cannot just walk into a bank and get a higher U.S. allocation. And in the case of Republic Bank users, the, the maximum you can get is 5000 anyway. And the rest of the banks, the cap is at 10000 U.S. per cycle. Now, just to put this into perspective, because I realize like the more, the more I educate and put content out into the into the public space, and I read the comments, I take a pulse check just to make sure that the message has been received, I realize that a lot of y'all simply lack critical thinking, and you don't connect the dots. You just don't connect the dots. So let me give you an example as to why this is such a big issue, right? If, and why this cap is, is why the cap on the U.S. for credit cards, listen, I understand why it's happening, but we still have to live. So we still have to figure out ways to, to get around this thing, right? You want to travel. And you have your, maybe you're taking your girl, maybe you're taking your family. And you guys decide you want to go Dubai. By the time you don't buy your flights, you don't you don't spend more than your five thousand US US allocation, right? You probably spent you probably spent your ten thousand US allocation if you're going with if you're going with family and you're paying for them. You probably spent your ten thousand US allocation on just your flights alone, maybe flights and hotel. But if you were if you were gonna be traveling, you know, within a couple of days, maybe a week, maybe two weeks, or whatever the case is. If you're traveling, but you've maxed out your U.S. allocation and you have to wait for another billing cycle to get a fresh U.S. allocation, then you have no access to your money. After you don't buy your flights and your hotel, you, you, you jump on a plane and you land, and now we, you have to wait to a new cycle to get your USD. And you have to think about those things. And that's not always the case. Like, you're not always going to be able to say, all right, I'm going to order it this month, and then I will leave the following month when I have a fresh USD allocation on my credit card so I know I have access to money. That's not always the case. I, tra I travel all the time, and a lot of the times, 
yo, a company could reach out maybe like a week, a week out of the event and be like, hey, we want you, or two weeks out of the event, two weeks away from the event, and say, hey, we want you to come and do X, Y, and Z, and they buy the, they buy the flights and everything, and I might have already maxed out my U.S. allocation because I've been buying other stuff or conducting my business, and I, I myself have to wait for a fresh U.S. US allocation. And then you jump on a plane and you're like, yo, I need to go and get uh, some, some, some U.S. dollars at the airport or something because my credit card does not have the allocation to support me. So that, 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 this, is, this is a big issue for, 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 for everybody, right? This is a big issue for everybody. So not everybody could just walk into a bank and get a fresh um, sorry, get a higher USD limit. That's just that. It's not how it works. On top of that, Central Bank in Trinidad and Tobago says that ten percent of the country has credit cards. So again, I don't know if some of y'all did maths in school, but uh, just just ask, just telling people go get a higher US allocation is is not it's not a solution, All right? Then you have some people justifying, oh well, I get the amount of US that I want once I make the request to my bank and I give them enough time. That's the point, people. We do not want to notify the bank. We don't want to ask for our money. We know we have money, and we just want to use our money. So the justifications and you know some of the comments, again, some of y'all just really don't connect the dots. Critical thinking ain't there. Anyways, let's keep it moving. So how does having a U.S. account help? Well, the U.S. account helps in a few ways. So for one... If you are a business that gets paid from clients online or maybe they, even if it's paid by wire transfer, if you register your business in the U.S. and have a U.S. bank account, that's going to give you full access to your funds. Remember, there's no limit, right? The only limit is whatever you have in your account. So if you're getting paid online or your, your clients are paying you via wire transfer, maybe they want to pay you via Zelle or Cash App, those types of things. Um, having that U.S. account, you can get paid, and then when the money is in your U.S. account, you're going to have full access to your funds to do whatever you need to do with your money, right? Second, if you travel, you now have full access to your funds, and you're going to have a card, whether it be virtual or physical, and that card will allow you to be able to use your use your money anywhere Visa, Visa or MasterCard is accepted, whatever Whoever is pinned um, that particular institution's card that you're using, you could use it wherever that Visa or MasterCard is going to be located around the world um, and online as well. And thirdly, if you have friends or family who need to send you money uh, from abroad, it's cheaper and, f- and easier for them to send it to a bank in the U.S. and you'll be able to use that bank card right here in Trinidad and Tobago. So I have a Bank of America card. Um, I, I load up funds on that. So again, I don't have no limitations on my money and I'll get into how you load up the card as well. Um, yeah, I have, I have, I have the bank of America card, um, money's in the account. And if I want to use the card locally in Trinidad, I could just go to the ATM. I could withdraw TT currency if I want to, um, the conversion happens because obviously the account, the, the denomination of funds is in U.S. dollars because it's a U.S. bank. But I could come and I could take out TT dollars here or I just go to any point of sale and I just tap my card and I pay. Uh, They charge 30 cents for international transaction, 30 30 cents U.S. Uh, That's like $3 TT per transaction. But again, that's that's an international transaction, right? But it's still better for me to do that because at least I have no limitations on my money. So, you know, that's, that's me. Now, some people have also said this, and I need to address this. Can't I just open a local USD account with a bank in Trinidad and Tobago? I've even seen some people come on my post and be like, again, this is a dumb article. You could just open a local US account, and, and, and there you go. Let me explain why that's nonsense. Even when you have a local USD account with a bank in Trinidad and Tobago, they still do not give you full access to your funds. You can have cash in the account, but you still need to apply to the bank to get that cash because of the forex shortage. 
and they only give you up to two hundred and fifty dollars at your request. And typically, they're only going to give it to you when they sh- when you show that you're flying out. Again, there are people that are like, "Well, I get it whenever I want." Yeah, just because that's your experience, that does not mean that is the population's experience. The population, the regular person on the ground, they the banks are telling them they need to apply for the money and they need to show that they are flying out. They need to show a proof of a plane ticket that you're flying out in order to get the $250. Okay? That's happened to me. It has happened to me. I went, and I'll give you a quick story. I went to open up a, this is like a year, year or two ago at this point. I went to open up a U.S. account inside of Republic Bank, right? Republic Bank told me that in order to open up the U.S. account, I need to deposit 500 U.S. dollars cash. I need to have 500 U.S. dollars cash to open the account, right? So I had all the documentation, and then they tell me, yeah, 500 USD cash. I'm like, okay, well, I have my bank card or I have funds, you know, take the TT and take the equivalent. Because with Scotiabank, to open it was 100 U.S., but they took the equivalent from the TT dollars that I had. They took the equivalent. So I paid like 700 TT, and they just converted it to the U.S. to, you know, appease their $100 U.S. Um, thing. But Republic Bank is like, no, we need to have the physical cash. So I'm like, okay, well, this is my home branch. I'll just go downstairs, and I'll, I'll go and get the U.S. dollars. And they're like, nope, um, we only give out the U.S. dollars if you're traveling. So I'm like, Okay, well, I'm traveling. And she's like, okay, great, you're traveling. Do you have a plane ticket? Can you show us a proof of plane ticket? I'm like, no, I, I'm, I don't have a plane ticket. I'm just, I just said I was traveling just so I could get the 500, the $500. Um, and she's like, well, no, it doesn't work like that. So I'm like, well, again, this is my home branch, so why can't you know, I just get the $500? So then she's like, yeah, but what are you going to use the money for? I'm like, is this a Twilight Zone? I'm using it to open the account. You just told me I need 500 USD cash. Where would I get 500 USD cash if not from my home bank? Home bank. She's like, yeah, that's a bit of a pickle. She's like, but how are you going to get the 500 US? How are you going to get US dollars um, anyway? If you open the account, how are you going to get US dollars anyway? I'm like, well, when I get paid from clients um, or abroad, I would get the USD. And she's like, okay, great. Um, can you get them? To, can you get someone to pay you within the next two days? Because we could open the account for 48 hours um, as long as you get the 500 USD in the account. I'm like, well, that I could, I, yes, I could get, I, like I could do something to, to get USD into the account. I'm like, however, you're saying 20, you're saying 48 hours, but to process the USD payments with, with, with WePay and send the money to the bank account takes um, five to eight days for processing U.S. transfers to, to the local banks. And she's like, yeah, the account will close by then. I'm like, yo, this girl is not helping whatsoever. So again, opening a, US, a local USD account is not the answer. On top of that, even when you do have the funds in your account, they still want you to apply to get the physical cash. Um, Otherwise, the only thing they're going to do is they're going to do a wire transfer for you um, with the funds in your account, and even that has a cap. But they will tell you what the cap is on that particular day. So again, to me, local USD accounts at the banks are absolutely useless. I still have to apply for getting the cash in hand. And then there's also no debit card attached to the u.s account so you can't even you know tap your card um to get access to that usd so that to me local usd accounts are, are, are a waste of time it's better you get an account outside of the country all right so how do you open up a personal bank account in the u.s all right so first things first you need to physically be this is for personal accounts right if you want a personal account You need to physically be in the U.S. to open a personal bank account. Second, you want to, if you make a trip, again, you don't have to be living there, but you make a trip, you go into any one of these banks, and you're going to open up what is called a non-citizen's account, right? And the banks that allow you to open up a non-citizen's account, 
is Bank of America, Chase, TD, Wells Fargo, and Citibank. All right. What are you going to need is ID. You're going to need two forms of ID from Trinidad and Tobago. I use my passport and my driver's license. And you're going to need a proof of a U.S. address. So you need to have a U.S. address, but let me show you how you guys can get a U.S. address. Now, and I'll also give you guys a caveat um, as well. So to get a U.S. address, I have three suggestions for you. So for one, if you have family or friends, you can ask them to add, um, have them add you to one of their bills. So that way you could show proof of address. So I asked my aunt, hey, can you put me on a bill? And the easiest bill for, 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 us, for me to get put on was a phone bill. Um, I got put on the phone bill. We printed out a copy of uh, a bill. Um, and that's what I used as proof of address. Two, um, and I seen this in the bank, right? I, I learned about this in the bank when I was opening up my accounts in Bank of America. Uh, you could have somebody draft up a lease agreement for you, right? So have a friend or family that you're, that you're cool with, have them download a lease agreement, um, fill it out, and just say you're renting there, right? And the banks are going to accept that as, a, as proof of address, so, again, I, I, I see it happening in the bank um, where, they took, where they took lease agreements, right? So, you had somebody from different, a different country, um, and they just used a lease agreement to say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm staying here, <laughs> right? I'm staying here. Um, and they used the lease agreement for the proof of address. This is just for your mail, you know. So, um, get a friend or family to download a lease agreement, fill it out to say that you're renting, and use that as a proof of address, the third option is you can also go to the USPS website and for a dollar and 10 cents, US dollars, a dollar and 10 cents, you can do a change of address. So you can enter in any US address for the old address and then you're going to put the new address in the, in, in, you're going to put the new address um, where you're going to be staying and they will mail you a physical letter in four days as proof of change from USPS and the banks will accept that proof of change from the USPS website. All right. So uh, go to the USPS website. Um, I have a, I have an article about this and I have the link as well. So if you just type in uh, USPS change of address into Google, you'll get the website. You just put in any old, any heck you can put in a skybox address as the old address. And then for the new address, you will put your friend or family's address. Um, again, just make sure it's people that you're good with and, and you're allowed to use their address. Put in their address and then they're going to mail you a letter saying, hey, this is your new address. And the banks take that as proof of address. Okay. So, the other, and the caveat is, um, I had a couple people tell me that with Citibank, they didn't even have to provide a proof of address. Uh, Citibank took... There are two forms of ID and took a utility bill uh, from their home country. So, folks, if you have a utility bill from your home country, Citibank will take that and they'll take your two forms of ID. So that's an option for people right there. Again, you have to be you have to do this for personal accounts. You have to do that in person. All right. So check that out. Now, how do you register a business account in the U.S.? Well, this is going to be two part: registering the business in the U.S. and also, you know, how to um, opening up the the, the 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 bank account. So this is something. So for business accounts, this is something that you could do remotely via a third party. The third party is going to register your business uh, in the U.S. and get you the EIN number, which is like your tax number, and they are going to open the bank account for you. Once you receive the EIN number, however, you are free to open up bank accounts with any institution of your choice as well. So some of the companies that you can use um, to open up that bank account is going to be Start Global. Start Global. Another company is called First Base. First Base. Then you got Jump Start Filings. Jump Start Filings. And the fourth company is Doula. D-O-O-L-A. Doula. D-O-O-L-A. 
These companies are going to allow you to register your business in any state, right? So do your homework and figure out which one, whether it be Wyoming, Delaware, you know, figure out which, which state you want to use to register your business. And once you have the business registered, you're going to get the EIN number. And then they will also open up a bank account for you. A lot of them like to use Mercury as Mercury is a digital bank. So it'll open up a digital bank with Mercury for you. Um, and that's going to give you some flexibility as well because it's, because it is a digital bank. All right. So that's how you're going to open up your, that's how you're going to register your business in the U.S., but also open up a business account, a business bank account in the U.S. Now, here's the big one, right? People want to know how do I fund the U.S. account from Trinidad and Tobago. So for me, Every single month, I send money to my U.S. account so that when I need the USD, I'm not scrambling to get it, right? And that's a mindset that you should probably get into. Don't wait until you have to travel, and then you're like, oh, my God, I have to go and scramble. Because remember, we have limitations on U.S. So you want to take bits of, of your money every single month to send out to your, to, your, to your new account in the States, right? And here's how you do that. One. You could do that through credit cards. So I actually do two things, right? You could, um, well, for PayPal, let me clarify. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. So with PayPal, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll add Ys into the equation as well, all right? Um, what you could do is you could use PayPal to send money to your foreign account, right? So I would, I have two PayPal accounts. I have a Trinidad PayPal and I have a, a U.S. PayPal. So I could send money from my Trinidad PayPal account to my U.S. PayPal account. And then it's going to deposit those funds into my Bank of America account, right? Now, if you have to send over 500 USD to a U.S. PayPal account, it is going to ask you for your tax ID. You need to have a tax ID, uh, the EIN number. If you want to be able to send over 500 U.S. per transaction uh, to the U.S. PayPal account. So that's a caveat, right? The other way that I get money into my U.S. PayPal account is if I use WISE. But I'll talk about WISE in a bit, right? But I can use my credit card and add money directly to the WISE account. Now, WISE is a virtual bank. So I could use, you know, um, I could deposit the funds so I could register my bank accounts in the States and also in Trinidad um, to WISE. And when I load the funds from my credit card into WISE, I could then say, hey, I want you to deposit those funds to my Bank of America account. Or if somebody pays me via wire transfer, I can give them my WISE details. And then I, once the money is in the account, I could either spend it with WISE because WISE also gives you a credit card as well, virtual and physical, or I can have those funds deposited to my Bank of America account, or they'll deposit the funds to my local accounts in Trinidad and Tobago. Whether it be in U.S. Cur the local U.S. account, I could deposit those funds to, or it could be the TT account. Right? You have a lot of flexibility um, with Wise like that. The other way I fund the card, I fund the account. Sorry is you could use Western Union Direct. So you could walk into Western Union with your TT currency or the currency of your home country, and you could say, hey, they do direct deposits into U.S. bank accounts. So what that is going, what, what they will need is the name of the account holder, the address, the phone number, the bank name, the account number, and the routing number. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. Um, and they will do a direct deposit into your U.S. bank account. So you're giving them all that information, and then you could do the um, you could do they'll deposit the funds right into your bank account. I I'm even I'm even like just reading this back. I'm gonna have my notes. I'm even reading it back, and I'm like, oh yeah, I could do the same thing with Wise. So you can do a direct deposit from Western Union right into Wise account because again, Wise is a virtual bank from the states. So you know you could use Western Union to send the money into your WISE account as well, all right? Um, and then, you, and then I mean, if you, if you wanted to, you could also use MoneyGram, and you could MoneyGram money to your friends or family abroad, and if, they, if they're in the States, they could sell you the money or cash shop you the money and things like that, right? 
Uh, another way that I add money to the account, I mean, this is the old-fashioned way, is, you know, you take out you take out your USD, and, you know, when you touch down on the stage, just go deposit it into your, into your bank account, all right? And then also, if you have an online business or you're doing e-commerce, set up your e-commerce so that your funds directly go into your U.S. account. So those are a few of the ways that I can fund my U.S. account, all right? And then when the money is in your U.S. account, you have... You have uh, full access to the funds. There's no limitations on the funds that you have in the account. So that's how you would set up a personal or business U.S. account and how you go about funding the account. Now, let's talk about WISE, right? WISE, I think, is something that every single person, especially if you're in Trinidad and Tobago, I think every single person should have a WISE account. Now, to set up WISE, you go to WISE.com. You're going to need, um, you're going to need, talk to somebody that does not live in the States <laughs> and ask them to use their address, okay, when setting up the, some setting up the accounts. You're going to, you need to have your local ID, right? You go to WISE.com, you go and register. It's going to ask you, you know, what country are you living in? Um, as, soon as, you, as soon as you go to register the account, it's going to ask you what country are you living in? You are going to put your friend's address. If you use the states, the states is only going to work for you if you have a proof of address. So you see how I've opened up a Bank of America account? I have a proof of address. I would just download my bank statement, and I would use that as my proof of address if I wanted to use um, that same address for WISE, right? But if you do not have uh, a proof of address for the U.S., then I recommend talking to any of your friends in a different country, right? Um, because when you use a different country's address, you do not have to provide a proof of address to open a WISE account. So I've been helping people. I helped like uh, about six or seven people just in the last couple of days alone um, during our sessions. Um, we did our sessions and, you know, they had friends or family in, in Canada or the UK predominantly and we were able to open their accounts without any proof of address needed. So get somebody from not the U.S., anywhere else. If it is in the U.S., if you are somebody who has a proof of address, you have a bill in your name, you have a bank account in your name in the U.S., you could use that as the proof of address and, st and use the exact same address for WISE, right? So you, it's going to ask you where you get, where you're residing. Put your friends or family address and then you just fill out all the information, right? Fill out all your name. Um, it's going to ask you for a picture of your, of your ID. So, like, we've used passports. We've used driver's license. We've used national ID cards um, as, the, as the proof of identification. So, you know, take your pictures of the proof of identification when it asks. Um, then it's going to open up the account. So, you're going to be able to... And the good thing with WISE is you can have... Um, you could have up to 40 different currency accounts, right? So they allow you to open up um, accounts with uh, a variety of, of currencies, like over 40 currencies. So you get to decide, um, do you want to have pounds? Do you want to have U.S.? Do you want to have Canadian? Do you want to have Turkish dollars? Do you want to have pesos? You decide what you want, right? So after you select the currency, chances are you're probably going to want U.S. So you click on the U.S. currency to open up the account, right? Um, once you click on the currency to open up the account, when you go and you click on, when you open, when, ah, sorry, when you open up the currency account, right, you're going to provide your identifications. Once all of that is confirmed, you're then going to click on the card section and then you're going to order yourself the virtual card and you're going to order yourself the physical card. Now the physical card, this is a key difference, right? After you have confirmed your IDs and the account is open and all that good stuff, when you click on the physical card, it's going to ask you about an address again. But pay attention because when you click on the physical card, the address it's asking you is where do you want us to deliver the card to? At that point, you can put Trinidad and Tobago or whatever island you are living in. So when you're creating the account, you're going to be using your friend's ID from a different country. Not your friend's ID. Your friend's address from a different, a different country. But when you're getting the physical card, 
pay attention because asking for the de- for the delivery address and make sure you put in your home address in whatever island or country you are living from and it's going to mail the physical card to that address. So again, when you're opening the account, open it with your friend's address, your friend's or family address from abroad. If you do not have a proof of address, do not use the states. Find somebody else in a different country where you could where they've allowed you to use their address. All right. Um, and the IDs are going to be local IDs. Right. It's going to be local IDs you're going to be using for the verification. Um, and yeah, you're going to be able to get through. Now, for me, when I opened the account, I had to pay 30 us dollars for the no i had to pay 20 us dollars for the physical card yo i don't know what's going on because i've been opening accounts with people all all week and you know the people using canadian addresses didn't have to pay for the physical cards it's it's crazy but anyways right so if if you if you get through and it doesn't ask you to pay no problem but if it asks you to pay that's also normal i don't know why they i don't know why it's not the same for everybody but anyways so the wise account is a virtual bank account you are going to have a it's you're going to have a checkings account you're going to have the wiring information they wire through ach they do wire transfers where you have to have the routing numbers and they also do transfers to the swift network as well so you can connect your local bank accounts, both the local U.S. account in Trinidad and Tobago, or you can connect a TT dollar account as well to Wise, and you need to use the SWIFT network, all right? A lot of people I've seen had problems with Wise and connecting their bank accounts because they were trying to use the wire section. You need to use SWIFT. Remember, they do, th- they do three forms of transfers. They do ACH, they do wire transfer, and they, use, and they do SWIFT network transfers. For us in the islands, you need to use the SWIFT network when you're connecting your local bank accounts. So let's just say if somebody sent money to your WISE account from abroad and you wanted it to go into your local accounts in your country, then you need to add, it could be your TT dollar account or your USD account. You need to add that to WISE. Also, it could be a business account as well. You can add your business accounts to wise as well you just need to do it through the swift option okay so once you add your accounts to wise um also when you have the physical and digital cards if somebody pays you if somebody sends you money from abroad you have options you can keep the money in wise and you could use the virtual and the physical cards and just tap to pay or insert your your card and make your payments or whatever. The beautiful thing is if you're somebody that travels, right? If you travel or maybe you have to do orders um, to to your, you know, you got to order supplies and stuff like that. Um, With WISE, remember, you could use WISE. You could fund the WISE account through your credit card. Remember, our credit cards have limitations on, on U.S. So you could max out your U.S., just loading the funds into wise and wise is going to give you a much much higher limit because with wise um you can spend up to forty one thousand us per month um when you're you know when you're you know shopping online or you're buying things or you're paying vendors or you're traveling and you're using your physical card you get up to forty one thousand dollars a month um but then if you want to withdraw cash out of an atm they allow you to draw up to f- up to five thousand US in cash per month. So forty one thousand if you're just inserting your card and tapping to pay or buying online that type of thing. Forty one thousand per month or five thousand if you're withdrawing cash. So if your clients are paying you, then if they're wire transferring you money, then wire transfer into Wise, um, and then you could use the money from the Wise balance with your credit with your wise cards or if you need the money to go into your local accounts you're going to add your local accounts you're going to use the swift network add the local account um, as a recipient so you're going to click on recipients add your accounts fill out the information but use the swift network for the transfers and if you want the funds to go into your local accounts you would just deposit the funds to your local accounts right the other good thing is that um 
you could take the Wise bank account and connect it to PayPal. So again, that's good because if you're somebody doing e-commerce and PayPal's on your website processing the payments of your products and services, those funds could then be deposited into your Wise account. And then again, you have you have immediate access to your money with a credit card, right? You have immediate access to your funds with the Wise card, or you could take the additional step and say, okay, I want this money into my local account um, here in your home country. So you can connect the Wise bank account to PayPal and do that. All right. So this is why Wise is so significant. All right. You have access to your money. Again, if you're somebody who is receiving funds from someone abroad, friends or family, they're sending you money all the time. Maybe they're Western Union, Western Union. You know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say? If they're Western unioning the money to your money, grabbing the money to you or, you know, the wire transfers to the bank, you know, they could just wire transfer the money because with everybody abroad, they do wire transfers as a part of their online bank and they just do it from the computer. Right. So they can send you the money to your wise account and then you have immediate access with the wise card. That's why this is so significant. And then if you are a business and you're getting paid by clients through PayPal, or maybe even your friends and family don't want to do the wire transfer, they can send the money through PayPal to you, and then you just deposit the funds from PayPal to your WISE account. And again, you have immediate access with the WISE cards, or you can deposit the funds to your local bank account. That is why this is so significant. Right? I need you to understand why this information is so significant for everybody, especially in Trinidad and Tobago. All right? And again, if you're in the, in, the, in the other islands, this information is good too because I've been helping a lot of people from Jamaica, St. Lucia, Barbados with the WISE accounts as well. So then we have the Color app in the mix. Now remember, the Color app is a payment uh, application, right? So with Color... You are able to take payments via tap to t- tap to tap to pay. So let's just say you're doing a transaction. Someone has to buy something from you. Um, you will jump into the color app. You put in, you click on the tap to pay, put in the amount that they owe you, and they can tap their regular links cards or their bank cards, their Visa debit cards, or their credit cards from any country in the world. Color works with any country's cards in the entire world so if somebody comes from russia and they have a credit card they can tap to pay you through the color app right so you can take payments from anybody um through tap to pay you can do the qr code scanner where again you generate the qr code inside of the app and the person will just scan it with their phone and then put in their payment details and pay you or you could send digital invoices from color as well so you get the person's email or you have their whatsapp create the digital invoice and send it via email or send it via social media or any of the messenger apps. They click on the invoice and then they put in their credit card details and pay you, right? Now, when you get the color card, the color card, same thing. When somebody pays you and you have the money inside of the color app, you have the ability to send the money to your local bank account. If you have a local TT dollar account or you have a local US dollar account, a color allows you to add your US account or it allows you to add your TT account, so you can deposit those funds into your bank account, right? Um, if somebody is paying you outside of Trinidad, then it's just going to be in U.S., and that funds are going to be in the U.S. side of your of your color wallet, and then you could deposit it to your local account, or or you could apply for the um, it's a hundred dollars TT. You could apply for the color card. And they'll mail you a card. Keep in mind, there's a little bit of a backlog. And then TT Post is also kind of taking a bit long to get the cards to people's houses as well. So just keep that in mind. But nonetheless, apply for the card. It's $100. And once you get the card now, whatever money is in your color wallet, you're going to be able to use. So if somebody pays you, you can now take your color card and go into the grocery stores or wherever, ATMs, and withdraw your money or make payments, if you want to do stuff online, the physical card that you're going to be getting is going to give you 500 US dollars per month to shop online with the physical card. And then they're going to be rolling out the digital card soon. But from what I've been told, um, there's the, the only limit to your color card is however much US dollars you have in your account. 
So if people are paying you and you have a thousand US dollars in your account, with the virtual card, you could use whatever is in the US account. So the physical card is going to be tied to your home currency. And the digital card is going to be tied to the U.S. side of the color app, right? The good thing with color as well is you could um, get the color card and you can add the color card to PayPal. And that's going to allow you to make payments. But most importantly, it's going to allow you to receive funds, right? So, again, if you have friends or family abroad that are looking to send you money, they would PayPal you the money and you would withdraw the money into your color card. All right, and you have that in your color card. So you, ha you have the option for WISE. So add your WISE, your WISE account to your PayPal. Also, you can add your color card to PayPal as well. And then if you want, you could take the, the, the funds you've received from friends, family, or clients abroad through PayPal, and you could deposit it to your color app. And then your color card is going to have access to the funds that are inside of your color app. Do you understand why this is so important? And this is why after listening to this episode, I think everybody should take some time today and go set up both WISE, go set up your WISE accounts and go set up your color card accounts because it's going to give you flexibility to receive money from around the world and give you immediate access to the funds because you have those cards attached to WISE, you have the cards attached to color, right? So you're going to get immediate access to your funds. But then also, if you're conducting business, you should definitely have these cards as well. Um, if you travel, you most definitely want to have these cards um, because then you're not just stuck with um, a, TT, a TT card and you're limited in what you can do because you don't have the U.S. allocation. So everybody that listens to this episode should go and immediately go and sign up for a WISE card and keep in mind, if you're in the Caribbean, the WISE business accounts are not available yet. What we're talking about is when you're signing up, you're clicking on the WISE personal accounts. All right. Um, but even though it's a personal account, remember, if you want to, if you're doing business with WISE, even though it's a personal account, um, you can still connect your business account um, to WISE. So when the funds come in, you can deposit the funds to your business account. All right. It's just a middleman connecting, collecting the payments on your behalf. So you are still going to use the personal, right? The wise personal, but you can attach your business account and that way it'll, the funds will flow into your business account. So, um, if you have PayPal and people are paying you via PayPal, um, again, just add your wise accounts because PayPal in Trinidad and Tobago doesn't connect to any business accounts directly. Right? So you have to use wise Wise will collect the money, and then you can forward the funds to your business accounts if you're in Trinidad and Tobago. So everybody should go and get a Wise account and download the Color app immediately after listening to this episode. Set all of these things up. That way you can now um, conduct your business. You can travel. You can do things um, without the limitations of only using the local systems in Trinidad and Tobago, which have just, you know, cut us off at the knees and you really can't do much um, with the banking system in uh, from Trinidad, right? So I hope this episode was a very insightful one. <laughs> I hope it was insightful. I really hope you do take action. I will link to WISE. I will link to... Um, color and I will link to the other applications. Actually, matter of fact, when it comes to opening the account, I'm going to link the article for how to open the US account because that's going to have all of the information and a full breakdown as to what you need. It's a full guide to opening up a US account, both personal and business. So I will link to that and that will provide you with the necessary links. And then I will also link to the color app so you can go download that as well. But again, everybody, after listening to this, you should immediately go and set up your WISE account. Do not wait. Remember, unless you have uh, proof of a U.S. address, go talk to a friend or family that lives in a different country other than the U.S. Uh, get permission, use their address um, for your account, and then go and get your WISE cards and go make note of the WISE um, 
the the wise banking information so that you can start to receive your money from friends, family, and clients abroad, and then go get the wise card so you have you know unfiltered access to your money. You should not have to apply for your money and beg and hope and pray and plead for your money in the case of, of my listeners in Trinidad and Tobago. All right. So that is it for me today. I hope that was insightful. All right. If you guys enjoyed the podcast, you know I don't ask for much, but please like and rate the podcast. The ratings help to continue to grow the Digipreneur FM family. If you really enjoy the podcast today, drop a review. I read the reviews. It helps me, keeps me on my toes, but also people who are looking to you know, check out the podcast. They read the reviews first to see if it's any good, right? So the reviews are going to help me grow the podcast family um, all across the world, right? Also, we have rebuilt from scratch. I rebuilt the Digipreneur FM website. So go and check that bad boy out. I've rebuilt it. It's it's fresh. It's up to date. My old website was starting to glitch out and give me headache and you know listen when the brand is when the brand is getting bigger your digital assets need to reflect you know the quality of that brand so i needed to do a whole refresh of my digipreneur fm website which i did so you know go check it out let me know your thoughts about the the new website and i made it easier to you know listen to the episodes and whatnot um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, go and check me on social media at K E R O N R O S C across any social media platform. I'm most active on LinkedIn and also on Instagram as well. Go check me out. And last but not least, go check out the KaronRose.com website to learn more about building a digital presence and monetizing your platforms. And, you know, in the show notes, the link to the Digipreneur. FM website will be there, so go check out the website, subscribe to the email list to stay up to date on all things related to the podcast, all right? That is it from me today, folks. Enjoy the rest of your week. It's a Thursday. You know, Friday's just around the corner, so enjoy the rest of your week. I will see y'all in the next episode. Take care, everybody. You've been listening to the Digiboss, Karan Rose. We hope your notepad was filled after this episode. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. The learning doesn't stop, folks. And to make sure you don't miss any gems from the Digiboss, go over and follow him on all social media platforms at Karan Rose. Folks, don't just sit there with a notepad. We need you to implement at least one thing into your business before the next episode. That's the only way your business levels up. Thanks for listening to Digipreneur FM. Now, Go be great.